Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 1b, Sockets, coming from the previous episode where we spoke about logging. Sockets, very famous and mostly used for implementing TCP IP sockets, can also be used for inter-process communications and, of course, Unix domain sockets. So they are a way to have two-way communications going on. So I will show you a TCP IP example using an echo server and client where you can pass message in both directions. And I will also show how both languages make it possible to wrap this in TLS, so to add a secure layer on top of this. For Python, I will use the module SSL that comes uh, with the standard library. And for Rust TLS, there is a crate called Rust LS. That's an actual implementation of this in Rust. It's fairly new and it doesn't implement everything of OpenSSL, but that is advantageous because all of the old craft that is no longer active actually is not even implemented and therefore not available and therefore not a problem that can be hacked. Let's hop over to the code. On the left again, as always, we have the Python code. On the right, we have the Rust code. They are not equivalent, but they kind of start a server and have a client. So in Python, all we have to do is import the socket module and then we are done. Here is just a definition of uh, where the server is going to listen. In Rust, on the right side, you can see that there's uh, more stuff that needs importing. And since the Rust uh, example is actually a bit more powerful than the Python one, we also use uh, threading. On the Python side, you can see we use the socket modules, uh, socket uh, constructor, if you want, to create the stream. And uh, here we use the TCP IP, uh, IP4 protocol and we create a stream. Then we bind it to our host and port that we've defined. We tell it uh, to listen. And this one will be true once our connection came in. And with this connection, we can then uh, tell you who connected. And afterwards, we will read the uh, data. If there's no data coming, we will stop this uh, loop. And if data came in, we will send it back to the client. Now the client does the same thing the other way around. So it also uses the socket constructor and the socket stream, but instead of binding, it just connects to the target server and sends a text and then it receives and then it exits. So Rust also gets away with the sockets to use only the standard library. As you can see here, we use a stud everywhere. So IO, this makes it easier for us to handle like reading a line and stuff like that. Then from net, we get the TCP listener and the streaming implementation for TCP and threading is then used to spawn a thread for every connection that comes in. All of this code, by the way, should never be used in a real life application that is open to the internet because it lacks everything that will make the software run stable a long time and in a secure way. For example, limiting the maximum amount of connections, having uh, timeouts handled and all uh, the other nice stuff that happens in networking. Now, the main code, what is, is, the, what is it doing? Well, it creates a listener by using the TCP listener, binds it, so that's the same as on the left but just in one line. Once we have this one, we can actually open a stream on the incoming connection. This will panic out if uh, the stream is actually not accessible. And then we spawn a thread that calls the handle client function, which we have down here. We pass in the stream. And here we create a buff reader from the stream. This buff reader will help us to then use this uh, read line method on the stream. And here we can then in a loop create a buffer of a string, read a line, so up until the new line character into this uh, buffer. And once we've done this, we can uh, get a reference to the stream and write out the buffer as bytes. If this uh, does not work out, this panics as well. So for the client, all we have to do is use the TCP stream 
since we are not uh, listening, all we do is we connect to a TCP stream, we get a stream, we make it mutable because we want to write to it, which we do write as the next step. We write immediately a message out onto the stream. And after we have done this, we can check out how many bytes we have written to the stream and we actually put it back to the user as an information. And what you can see here is we use again this buff reader on the stream and with this we are able to create a buffer again and read line. So this method is coming from this uh, trait implementation and now we can uh, read a line since the server will only repeat a line that we have written in, we will also get lines back so we can rely on that. And once we've done that, it will print the line and the length of the line to us. Now let's see if this actually works the way it's intended. Let's try the Rust stuff uh, first. Rust C echo server, we Rust C echo client RS. Then we start the echo server in the background and we run the echo client and it seems to work. Now let's hop over to the Python code. Here we can simply use a Python echo server pi in the background and we can run Python echo server client pi. And since we do not have the thread handling on uh, the Python code, the server exits after the first client connected and sends something to it. That would be the difference in the code on a concept basis. Let's see what happens if we want to wrap that in a TLS context. Let's uh, open up the code. This will take a while, sorry. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. And uh, this was formerly known as SSL. So the secure socket layer is uh, the grandfather of this. And that's also why the module in Python is still called SSL because it's a very long standing in the library. How do you wrap something in a TLS context? Well, you import the SSL module, you create a context. So here we create a TLS server. Then you will have to load the certificate chain. If you have public servers, the easiest one to get a hold of valid certificates is using a Let's Encrypt. That's a fairly cool service. And this is what I did. So these are actual files that hold my private key to one of my websites and the certificate chain necessary to be accepted by the client afterwards. Then of course, as we had before, host and port, we still create a socket that we bind to so that we can uh, listen on it. But once we did that, we can now wrap this into our TLS context. And that's exactly what the next line does, right? It uses the wrap socket, takes our socket that we created up here. And once we have this one, we can accept uh, connections. So here is the magic happening with all the key exchange and the rest handshakes necessary to set up the secure communication. And right after that, you can see that all of this uh, code block stays the same as it did uh, in the old code. So we took uh, this and uh, this part, and all we had to do is add this small section and of course the setup to get our certificates loaded. The same is done in Rust. But there we have to do some more magic again. So these imports we have already seen. So on the left, you can see in Python, they give us a very easy way to load the certificates. Here I wrote a small helper function that actually gets passed in the file name and 
a method that will get handed the reader instance that we create create so you can see that here right so we open up the file we create a buff reader instance and then we call the method so the second argument is a method with this uh, reader instance and uh, since this is the last statement this will be the return and uh, this means this method will return a vector of the keys and certificates that have been loaded so the first thing we do is we call this open cert file with a certificate and we pass it to the search function and the same we do with the keys but we pass it to the private keys function this will then hold the vectors with the respective keys and certs inside of there we can uh, configure the whole uh, rust ls at the beginning this is just the default so there's no client authentication if you want to use a client certificate for tls that's yet another option but the whole field of tls is uh, huge this is just a short introduction i'm not going to show all the features possible then we get the, to see the same code that we see saw before we create our tcp listener after we created the tcp listener we attach our certificates and keys as a single certificate to our configuration and once we have done uh, that i will change further down in the code so we set up the server config for every incoming connection we handle the socket so that's why we do uh, the unwrapping here to make sure that this is a valid socket once we have that we clone the server configuration then we again spawn a thread and we hand over this thread to the handle client function which gets uh, the socket and now also necessary the tls uh, server config which is wrapped in an atomic reference counter this is necessary because the multiple threads that have spawned have to use this uh, smart pointer to then uh, clean after up after themselves once the threads have uh, ended so handle client then creates the new server session so rustless uh, server session is created from uh, the configuration that we passed in once we have that we can actually create a stream and once we have the stream we can now use the buff reader and uh, once we have the buff reader we can actually use the loop and we can use the same uh, method we used before we create the buffer we read line into it if we have it we write it back out the big difference here is that once we have created this uh, stream with the buff reader we now have to use here the get uh, mute so we want to need we need a mutable reference to then have the write all available to us if we use the get ref as we did in the code before this would fail that's uh, down to how the rustless uh, stream has implemented its traits and that's uh, slightly different so once you wrapped it into a buff reader this is uh, one small pitfall that you might run into let's look at uh, the client so first we have to know which ip address to connect to unless we implement uh, dns resolving but we also need the host name or also cn the common name of the certificate because we have to verify that um, this ip address we connected to is actually serving us a certificate of the host name or common name that we expect then we use uh, the port of course to connect again we create our ssl context we use the normal stream connection as we did before here we wrap it again so this code is the same as the old client this is the new line and then from here on out we get to do the same stuff as before and there's not too much code change in python going on to write a tls client in rust we can also see that here we have the client in the main function so we have the main we also need to tell it the host name same uh, thing 
as in Python, of course, because we have to verify that the certificate matches the expected common name. Host is the same. Then we create again our rasterless uh, client config. But here we add the server's uh, trust anchors, which is the web PKI routes. So this will add all the TLS uh, server routes that are on your computer. Otherwise, you would have to set up a way more boilerplate to get this going. Then we have to create the DNS uh, rimref from our host name. This is done here. So once we have this DNS name in the correct format, because the host name can be, for example, with Unicode characters and stuff, then the DNS name will be different because it will be uh, Puni coded. So once we have uh, this set up, we can create our rasterless uh, client session. Again, we have to smart pointer wrap our config and pass the DNS name. As before, we create our TCP socket. Then we create a stream from our client session and the socket that we just connected to. And then we can immediately write our stuff there. And then we have access to the TLS session and we can get the Cypher suite, for example. Then we can print it out. And the code down here is not using the read line wrapper. It is creating a buffer that is being read into the buffer. And once it is done, it will write this to standard out and tell us how many bytes have been read into. Let's quickly test the Rust code to see if that works out. Okay, in order to run this, we can use the cargo run. And since we have uh, two binaries, we have the client and the server. We first run uh, the server in the background as we did before. And once uh, this is started, we can use cargo run bin TLS uh, echo to now run the client. And the client actually works in our favor. It tells us the Cypher suite uh, used. It is happy with the certificate and it uh, returns the message that it has written and the length of Hello Bob is uh, 10 characters. I hope this uh, quick introduction in uh, two sockets and how you can wrap them with the uh, TLS is useful. I highly suggest you actually don't try to write this on your own. There are really good uh, libraries out there that already implement the most common networking protocols. So especially for web servers, there's lots of implementations that have this correctly done, including then WebSockets, HTTP, HTTP2, and all the other good stuff. And then also for proper handling of flaky network connections and whatnot, you should look into libraries that actually handle all of this for you. And the same is true for Python. So look at, um, I don't know, Twisted, for example. In the Rust case, you might want to look at uh, Tokyo and libraries that use Tokyo as uh, the base to have a uh, high performing and well-written sockets handling done for you. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the From Python to Rust series will be XML.